Okay, next chapter in Zero Day is chapter 42. Addie pulled the covers to her chest, trying to hold back tears, trying to process what she'd just seen. David and Helene Brown were people, real people, and they were dead because of her. None of it had made sense. They were supposed to be just a story, something to lead the FBI astray. Addie tried to push the horrible scene she'd just witnessed from her mind, desperate to replace it with a happier thought. A memory washed over her. She was 13, strolling with Father and Mikey down the Avenue des Champs-Élysées in Paris. Father had swept the family away on a on a surprise trip as a reward after Addie successfully hacked into a jihadist website and shut it down, but not before alerting French authorities about their plans to bomb a nightclub. Addie was in heaven. She loved everything about Paris, the French Baroque architecture, the sounds of street musicians mingling with car horns honking and people chatting, the style and grace of the city's people. But most of all, Addie loved the feeling of freedom that she had had in the City of Lights. Here, she was just another teenage girl, Lilla Erlander, strolling the boulevards with her father and brother. She wasn't Addie Webster, the terrified child who'd been stolen from the Virginia governor's mansion five years earlier. Here, she could simply be herself without constantly needing to look over her shoulder, mindful that someone might recognize her. As the family meandered down the sidewalk, they peered in the windows of the upscale boutiques that lined the avenue, admiring the fashionable displays. Sleek, fitted dresses with wide leather belts, tailored suits, sparkling jewels. A street vendor caught Addie's eye. She stopped at the wooden cart, shelves crammed with miniature Eiffel Tower replicas, postcards, and colorful silk scarves. With a grin, she grabbed the tackiest thing she could find, a black beret with Paris written in bright yellow script across the front. She turned to father, stood on her tiptoes and placed the hat squarely on his head. She stepped back and giggled, hand over her mouth. As his eyebrows shot up, Michael shook his head and tried to hide his smile. Father leaned forward and inspected his reflection in the small rectangular mirror hanging from the vendor's cart. He looked ridiculous like an oversized kid on a class trip. Addie waited for him to fling the hat off, but instead he gave an exaggerated gasp. Très magnifique, he said, and pulled a wad of crumpled euros from his pocket and gave them to the vendor. They all laughed, continuing down the avenue. They stopped at a small outdoor cafe and sat down at a black wrought iron table beneath a yellow umbrella. Addie couldn't help but feel sophisticated as she tore off pieces of warm croissant and popped them in her mouth, followed by sips of espresso from a white demitasse cup. She leaned back and closed her eyes, sucking in a breath of the sweet-smelling air, tinged with the scent of sugar and roasted coffee beans. She smiled as the late afternoon sun warmed her cheeks. As the sun crept lower on the horizon, the family headed back toward the rented apartment. Along the way, they passed a small jewelry shop tucked into a large brick building. Addie came to a sudden stop, transfixed by a display on the other side of the store's window. A glittering hair clip shaped like a butterfly, but elegant, not childish. Dozens of sparkling red and blue gems decorated the wings. Addie reached up to her own hair, finally growing back finally growing back out after having been cut short and bleached blonde for so many years to disguise her looks. She didn't even notice father's slip in the store's front. Father slipped into the store's front. A moment later, a hand reached over the display and retrieved the clip. Father emerged a few moments later, carrying a small velvet box. Addie's eyes widened. You got it for me? Father smiled and creaked the box open. He pulled out the delicate clip. May I? He said. Addie nodded and he gently secured it in her hair. Father caught his breath. You look lovely, Lilla, he said. You look so grown up. Addie glanced at her reflection in the store window. She did look grown up. Barely a trace of the scared child left in her strong, confident gaze. 
She threw her arms around him. Thank you, she whispered. I love you, Father. I love you too, Lilla, he said, and I'm so proud of the person you've become. The world will be a better place thanks to you. Addie pulled the covers tighter to her chest. How could someone who cared so much about the safety of others purposely lure two innocent people to their deaths? She couldn't wrap her mind around it. It was like discovering two plus two equaled three. The image of David and Helene Brown crumpled to the ground, dead, flashed through Addie's mind again. They were just supposed to be a story, something to fool investigators. But as she listened to the voices in the hallway start up again, growing louder and closer, heading her way, Addie wasn't sure who she was trying to fool anymore. Her mother? The president? Darrow? Or herself?